Spoiler warning. The following discussion will contain spoilers. We recommend checking out the movie first, then coming back to hang with us. But, if you don't care about that, glad to have you here. Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Real Review. My name is Kevin. And I'm John. And we are The Real Movie Guys. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Real Sports Series, where we take a look at some of your favorite sports movies you may or may not have seen. Today, we're going to be taking a look at The Wrestler. Uh, a faded professional wrestler must retire, but finds his quest for a new life outside the ring a dispiriting struggle. Wow, this movie hits you <laughs> in all kinds of feels, I think. Uh, so, John, I would argue, and I don't know if you agree with me, a lot of our friendship started with professional wrestling. Right? Back in the day? Yes. yes. <laughs> I, that's kind of how we made our connection in high school. <laughs> uh, you know, other than that, we really didn't have much in common until, like, later years. You know, we started to, you know, realize, oh, shit, we're actually we're pretty much a lot alike in a lot of ways. <laughs> but uh, wrestling was, like, the spark for us. Right? I would say. Yeah. No, I think that's <laughs> also, like, an important thing to discuss, too. Yeah. That we are huge. Yeah. Or we were kind of huge wrestling fans. Yeah, I mean, we were and like that, massive wrestling to the point where it was pretty ridiculous. That was almost like our identity was just the wrestling fans. Oh well, yeah, like our our goal was always like when they came when they came close for like a pay per view or for yeah. live events, we traveled down to like AC to go see live events and buy a whole bunch of merchandise. And yeah, and we had our pay per views. We watched like every pay per view for a while. Like we were yeah, just get just yeah. get that chance to like see these wrestlers from TV like up close and personal was always mm -hmm. like that awesome. was a big deal for us and you know and w with that aspect going into this movie i don't know if that i guess that would be a, a more of a positive for us i would argue you know this is another insight that we have going into this movie that maybe the common fan doesn't i don't think you necessarily need it for this movie uh but i think it adds adds even more levity to what's being told in this movie yeah definitely because uh, let's just start with. I just want to start with the positives, right? So the main th positive going is Mickey Rourke. Oh, Mickey yeah. Rourke uh, had a had a, had a strong career early on, you know, in his life. Uh, but then he also suffered from you know drug, alcohol abuse, and whatnot. And he had uh, you know he had a time where he didn't act or really do anything. He was kind of just stuck in the mud. And then the wrestler came along. He did the movie. His career blew up. He was uh, nominated for best actor. He didn't win. That was just a nominee, but God damn, he, he probably should have won that year. I, again, I can't remember what he was up against, but Mickey Rourke steals the show. Like, you know, not being the biggest, like I know of Mickey Rourke prior to this movie, I wouldn't say I was the biggest fan, but I was, I was escaped. You know, I was totally entranced with his character from the start of this movie, right up to the very end. Like I cared about what happened to this guy. I did. I was very entranced in his story and <laughs> it's just, it's stripping away, you know, the layer there for me between actor and actor and movie. It was just, I felt like I was watching a biography. Like, well, I feel like I was watching thing, his life, this movie. Well, yeah. And also the one thing that this movie shows in great detail mm -hmm. is what these professional wrestlers who have who are doing small shows for a living have to go through each night mm -hmm. just to put on a show for fans who are probably paying like, say $35 and these wrestlers are making like maybe a hundred dollars a night or something, depending on how big their draw is and everything. Yeah. And but think about trying to live off that and your body going through all this stuff. Yeah. But before, everything. We even, before we even get into that, just like Mickey Rourke's performance, just in general, it's just, I think he embodies just that character, right? He embodies what that aging wrestler, you know, who was huge, you know, it was in his prime. And then, he fell off the circuit because of his age and he wasn't as popular anymore. And just dealing with that, he just, he encapsulates that performance. Like he steals the show every time he's on the screen. Right. I just, I can't think of another way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then you have Marissa Tomei, who's really, there's really only like, they're the two biggest actors in the movie. Um, Marissa Tomei, who plays a, an aging stripper. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's funny because they use, it's so clever to use that. Right. Cause you can almost argue that wrestlers and strippers are a lot alike. <laughs> they're not they're unconventional professions right and it's really based on identity uh they both have a profession where 
your profession almost defines you. When you hear someone's a professional wrestler, you pretty much like roll your eyes and go like, oh, scum of the earth. Same with a stripper. You know what I mean? You hear that they're a stripper, you're like, oh, that's pretty bad. You know, they're not well looked upon professions. And a lot of it has to do with at one point you're in your prime. And as you get older, you you lose stock. You're not, a, you're not as viable or as sought after. The other girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's I'm sorry, but we really don't want you. <laughs> but how old are you anyway? Oh, you're like my mom. Hey, <laughs> and some people have a hard time dealing with that, you know, losing that that fame. Not even, I would say fame, but that appreciation. You're almost less appreciated in life. You go from such a high adrenaline rush to almost being a nothing. That movie just captures it. And both of them are just extremely strong in their performance. Uh, but back to what you were saying. So another, th this movie, what it does is it it respects wrestling right wrestling is not a well-respected sport quote unquote i know it's even you could even argue us including it in real sports month or a real sports series that we're doing uh but i wanted to include because it, it is a sport you know it is a physical toll on your body you are you're performing uh you're you are an athlete in wrestling regardless of how you feel about it you you are an athlete overall and this movie extremely respects it you know it doesn't it doesn't showcase it in a negative light. It just showcases it as it is. And what you walk away with is really just your opinion of how you feel about the actual sport of wrestling. Uh, this movie's like a biography documentary, I feel like. I feel like we're, we're with the camera behind him, following him, Mickey Rourke, you know, making his choices and what he's doing with his life. Uh, a lot of it, I feel like now, which, you know, again, this happened after, so that's kind of interesting in hindsight. A lot of it seems similar to like a Jake the Snake Robert situation. Uh, I know there's that one documentary, John, I don't know if you, I think you saw it too. The, the rebirth, death and rose, the rebirth of Jake, the snake. That oh yeah. That was, that was really good. And it's, it's odd. It's eerily similar to that, right? Where, you know, he's, they're coming off this high of wrestling and they're almost being rebirthed into somebody else. Jake, the snake, you know, at the end was able to overcome it. Uh, Mickey Rourke though, unfortunately, you know, he isn't, he isn't able to overcome you know, the, just the identity of wrestling. The respect that pays to wrestling, extremely important. Uh, it's also very brutal. It doesn't hold anything yeah. back. This movie's very brutal. Uh, a lot of this is filmed actually locally. Uh, the, I think that was the, um, the boardwalk. I think that was, was it the Atlantic city boardwalk that they filmed on? Oh, the Atlantic City Boardwalk Hall. Yeah, Boardwalk Hall. Like a lot of it was filmed locally for us, so we we're you know entrenched. Uh, Ring of Honor was local to us at one point around when this was filming. Also, um, you know, was it a CZW? I think is the extreme promotion that they used there. Uh, they they were local to us at one point, like the Jersey Phil area. So a lot of this is like local promotions that they're real promotions that they're filming at, which is funny. Um, where you know maybe an old retired wrestler would go. Um, there's oh, a lot yeah. of there's a lot of scenes like that. It's just like I don't think people understand the what what happens to a wrestler. Like what happens after wrestling, right? What happens to an yeah. athlete after? Well, I also think it's also interesting too because like even nowadays you'll see like just those little wrestling pamphlets that are up on like bulletin <laughs> boards, right? And you'll see like an older wrestler being there, mm -hmm. and you're kind of thinking like, wow, I thought like you would have. <laughs> been doing something else or retired like done yeah. yeah but like it's almost like it's their passion to do wrestling it's their passion to be in the ring it's the crowd that gets them through it and mm -hmm. i feel like that's the one thing that now with more brands opening up and stuff yeah i feel like it gives another place for people to understand and enjoy wrestling at its finest not even that i mean this this movie raises a lot of like questions about you know, how wrestlers are treated and, you know, what, what's for them after life. Like uh, one of the, there's a couple of scenes in particular. Uh, one especially is when they're in, um, they're like in a, um, a club hall, you know, like one of those club halls, like an Elks club or something like that. Uh, he's signing autographs and you have all these wrestlers, sad looking wrestlers sitting in a circle, you know, meeting with fans for like 20 bucks, doing an autograph signing, you know, taking a picture. And it's just the saddest scene like you've ever seen these once great men, you know, or, famous people just like are nothing you know they're sitting in a dingy dingy room signing autographs that that's all they have really to look forward to that's that's the legacy they're almost leaving behind right and it's just so depressing for like 
five years they're on top of the world and yeah. they're loved and admired by so many and then all of a sudden they go back to reality and it's like mm-hmm. how did they handle that you know right it's a and huge downfall yeah uh yeah and it's just it, it's it's heartbreaking this movie is very heartbreaking because it, it shows the story of someone, you know, like I said, we talked about this movie has a lot to do with identity. Uh, there's a scene, especially when um, Randy, you know, he has a heart attack in the movie. So he, he's told he can't wrestle anymore. He shouldn't wrestle anymore. He definitely shouldn't wrestle anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, so he has to find something other outlet. So he's trying to mend his relationship with his daughter. He's trying, you know, to find a job. Uh, he works more hours at a supermarket that he works for. So he's at the supermarket and they give him a name tag, right? And the name tag says Robin. It's a very interesting angle that they take on this. So he says, well, my name is supposed to be Randy. Why don't you give me this name tag? Well, it's what it says on your W4 or whatever. And it just, it's weird because it slowly pans down the camera and then you see the name tag just Robin. And it's almost like, this is who I am, right? Yeah. This is who I really like. Randy is the identity that I, I want everyone to know me as. And then, but now I'm almost coming back down to earth being Robin. This is the person I actually am. Well, also it's interesting too. Like as soon, once he starts up that job, mm-hmm. he seems happy and he wants to go, do everything perfect. And then you see it slowly eating away at him mm-hmm. as like the situations he keeps going through. Mm-hmm. And when he finally has enough where that guy's like, no, I think I've seen you from somewhere. And he's just like, I know you're from someplace. Uh, you play softball? No. And you're not one of Mikey Bosch's buddies, right? Never heard the guy. What's that? Randy the Ram? No. The wrestler from the 80s? Ram Jam? I don't want them to... I don't want them to know me as this guy that who I used to be, I still want to be known as that guy. Well, the issue that he's facing is, you know, like you said, he wants to be known as Randy. And then he finally, when he can't wrestle anymore and he doesn't know what he has left, he starts a new life, right? He's trying to start it. He's doing all this stuff. And then he gets, he falls, he falls for Marissa Tomei, who's a stripper, who's also has her own issues where she doesn't want to separate her. You know, she doesn't want to have a life outside of being the stripper. She doesn't want to form any kind of relationship. So she pushes them away. Once she does that. Because I think you still feel something. You're a customer. Okay. You're a fucking customer. I don't go out with customers. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Hey, can I have some tequila over here, please? Randy at that point, he realizes you know, his, his world's falling, his world he created for himself that he thought he could escape to is falling apart. And the only thing he has to fall back on is that identity of being a wrestler. So when the guy at the supermarket realizes who he is and he's like, oh, you're Randy the Ram. That's who you are. He's like, no, no I never heard of the guy. No, like he's trying <laughs> to fight it. Right. He doesn't want to be that guy anymore. Like he's done. Like I, I'm trying to get away from it. And it's almost that realization that he can't escape it. No matter what, he well, can't escape. That's his identity. That's who he is. It almost always reminds me of like, like Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that like, he's always going to be Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He can never like run away from that. He can never hide from that. Yeah. That is always going to be Hulk Hogan. Right. No matter. And it's interesting because like the way he breaks his immersion, it's like he breaks his immersion from the real world at that point. Like, you know, he's, he's standing, you know, he's the guy's constantly going, Randy, oh, you're Randy, you're Randy. He takes his finger like, like a, like a match. Like he, like he's blading himself in a match. He takes his finger and shoves it into the meat cutter. cuts himself open like it's a wrestling match right and he's bleeding all over he's going crazy freaking out like a wrestler would so it's like he snapped he back to that, that identity lady. yeah yeah he's going he's cutting a promo Get your almost on people you know? like that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you little prick you gonna talk to me the way you do huh Randy. i fucking quit i quit man all right you want some fucking cheese lady huh get your own fucking cheese oh. He's cutting a 
prom, but he's going back to that life. And it's so bittersweet. Like in a way, in a way you can admire that. I think you can admire his passion. You know, you can admire his dedication to the character at the same time though. It's just really sad. Like he can't do anything else. I mean, I will say that one lady that keeps going more. Oh God. Yeah. Less. That triggered me big time. More. (laughs) A little less. A little less. A little more. <laughs> I was like, yo, he should have hit her with a steel chair by that time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I said, the story is phenomenal. If you, you really, people, you need to watch this movie. Uh, that's really what I can say. Uh, <laughs> but moving away from the story, there is some like mechanical things I want to talk about. Some of the mechanics that are used in this movie. Uh, again, I, I mentioned earlier, I felt this is very like a documentary style of filming uh it feels like like i said you're always behind the character you're just you're you're constantly watching him uh when i looked up a little bit about this i did notice it in the movie as well the soundtrack's very subdued in this movie uh i would argue there's not much of a soundtrack throughout it and i think that it's more like atmosphere kind of music it's not really like your typical soundtrack where you know you have your score accompanying everything uh, i think yeah. that's done on purpose uh, well, the, the only main... time the only time you hear a score really in this movie is that is transition. When he's going to the ring, right? Yeah, when he's in the ring, you have a transition, or not even that. Sometimes the matches are quiet, and you just hear the roar of the crowd, like he's hearing. It's very limited score. Uh, not to well, say that like... the music's not good, but it's just a very... It's more atmosphere than it is actually a score, which I think is... That's that's phenomenal. I like that. Well, yeah, like, and I feel like that being said, too, when he goes down for his last match mm-hmm. and you hear his music play, yeah. it kind of makes it even more real, real to you where mm-hmm. you kind of know that this is his last match mm-hmm. and just hearing his music... And just hearing how the fans got all hyped up and everything. Right. It kind of gave it even a bigger moment. Mm -hmm. I felt like. Yeah. And it's interesting the way they use, they use, they play with the psyche a lot in this movie. Uh, One of my other favorite scenes I have is when he's first going on to the new job of going to the the meat when he's you know going to cut the uh, cut the meat and stuff like that when he's about to go out there and deal with the public you hear like a roar of a crowd like he's sitting there and he's getting amped up and he's like about to go through the curtain and they you, know, you hear the crowd roaring and they're playing this music and he walks out cuts completely like you don't hear anything you just hear monday in life it's like well, kind of, that's like the adrenaline flow like that that's he was trying to get that feeling back right he was trying to have that feeling he had in wrestling when he's about to embark through the curtain for the first time to the crowd but it's not that there's no well, there's no more crowd i just i love that scene i think it just it's so telling for his psyche and like i said this movie is just it's so it's mesmerizing to me i don't know if it's more we're more jaded being wrestling fans if that's how we're we're just more drawn to it but again i just think this movie is just such a well executed masterpiece i really do but i also think that's about a lot of the movies that we're doing Mm -hmm. that involve certain sports and stuff Mm -hmm. going into it i don't think like if you hate a certain sport or a certain if you hate wrestling Mm -hmm. like with a passion or something i still don't think you're going to enjoy this movie as much as somebody that likes it mm-hmm. too. But with any sport, like if you hate baseball, mm-hmm. there's not many times that you're going to watch a baseball movie mm-hmm. or go out of your way to watch a baseball movie and actually enjoy it. But see, and my, my difference of opinion with that is this is one of those times where I think they strip, they give you everything you need to know 
like people have a general concept of what wrestling is, right? For the most part, you see a match on TV, you know, you've well, seen one, you've seen them all, arguably. But this movie goes behind the scenes. Sixth, we got Sugar and DJ Hyde versus the Funky Samoans. Seventh, Paul E. Normus and Andy Anderson versus Jim Powers and Papa Don. And last but not least, for the strap, we got Tommy Rotten versus Randy the Ram. All right, you guys got it? Yep. Got it. Got it. All right, let's do this. Right. Have a good time. It cuts away, it peels away the layers, it peels everything. There's nothing to hide. Like he's sitting in a like a kindergarten classroom, I think, at one point, getting ready for a match, taping himself up. And then, you know, they go, the guy walk, uh, one of the wrestlers, I think it's Johnny Rotten. I think it was one of the wrestlers. Is that who it was? I can't remember. He actually is a wrestler, but he comes in and he's like talking to him. He's like, oh, so what, hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you, um, Ram. And he's like, oh, nice to meet you too. Uh, I'm going to be your opponent tonight. We're going to be wrestling. And they talk, oh, I'm going to give you a couple, couple, of, couple soup bones. And I'm going to, you know, give you a couple punches and we'll finish it off with a Ram Jam. That, that's how those, that's how that goes in real life. Like they're not hiding anything. Uh, another scene, which is even funnier, is um, when he's buying like steroids. Like that, that's, pretty realistic that guy actually got arrested for selling drugs for selling steroids <laughs> that guy actually in real life got arrested for that so i don't even know if they knew that at the time he was a real whatever but that's actually what he got arrested for but just the casualness of it like oh you're good for the money you know give me 400 up front i'll take the rest of it when you get it all together 995 i know you only got 400 give me the 400 i know you're good for the rest you know like that that's how these rings work and it's just crazy to see how the curtain peeled back behind these shows. Uh, when he has his CZW show with the extreme, the extreme fight with the blood and the thumbtacks and the staple gun and. <laughs> You know, all these brutal, nasty, violent things that we've seen. But the guy he's wrestling at the time, he's just, he's such a nice guy. He's all polite. Staple yeah. gun. You never did it before? Uh, no. <laughs> Does that hurt? Silly question. Oh, yeah. Man, uh, not so bad going in. Yeah. Kind of scary. You know, you got a big yeah. metal thing up yeah. against you. But well, pulling them out, they're going to leave a couple little holes, a little bit of bug loss there. I can roll. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. Thank you. Take it easy with that staple gun. <laughs> no problem, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. Good to be wrestling on you tonight. I can't wait. Oh, we're going to do this and that. And it's just such a paradox, right? <laughs> Between real life. But that, that's what it is. You know, they're performers putting on a putting on an act for everyone. Well, yeah. And that's the one thing that, like, leads me to the only negative I really have about this movie, too. Mm -hmm. Is how he how it ends where he's kind of, like, having a heart attack in the ring. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if they had him pin the guy, right? Right. Like, they just called it off, they pinned him, like, and he walked out of the ring mm -hmm. and got to the back and collapsed then. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would have made it a little bit more better mm -hmm. because I feel like then it's, like, almost like this, his story has been told then, you know? So how, it, how they want it to be, mm -hmm. how it's so something in the ring, how it's all scripted and everything's right. done and that's his character. But then at the end, when he gets back there, then he goes... I feel like that's kind of would have been a little bit better for me. So you're arguing you wanted a you wanted a complete ending. Well, even if they would have just even if they would have just done it where they had the same thing where they ended it from in the ring. Mm -hmm. If they would have just ended it when he walked through the curtain backstage, I would have thought that would have been awesome. See, I disagree. I entirely disagree with you on that. I actually love the ending. Uh, you know, it's just that build up. You know, you're building up. So he has his final match against his old opponent. You know, they're having their final match. Um, also, even before that, he has a line. He says to Marissa Tomei where he's like, you know, I, she's like, oh, you're going to get hurt in the ring. You're going to get hurt. Like, you can't do this anymore. And he's like, no, it's the people out there that hurt me. You know what I'm doing? You know, the only place I get hurt is out there. The world don't give a shit about me. You know, this is this is where I belong. Hey. You hear them? This is where I belong. I gotta go. 
and he just goes through the curtain and the match starts and you know he's these you know he gives his promo and he has his match and throughout the match you know he's holding his chest and he's hurting and you know he gets to that final moment you know he climbs that ring ring you know he climbs the ring ropes he's at the top and he's just looking at the crowd just like loving no matter what happens like he loves what he's doing Right. Like it's, it's so, again, it's so bittersweet because you know, it's like, this is all he has. And I think he knows that too. So when he dives off, it doesn't really matter what happens after that. Right. It doesn't matter if we saw him die. It doesn't matter if we see him live. It just matters. He's going to be stuck in that cycle for the rest of his life. So let's just be with him and his last like crowning achievement moment. So when he dives off, you have that adrenaline rush of that finale. Again, you may not know, if he lived or died, but it, it doesn't matter overall. It's it's a beautifully well-crafted shot, and it just speaks volumes for the story it's trying to tell. It's going to be an endless cycle. Uh, some people, I've seen some theories that he did die at the end. I don't know what I per- personally think. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of torn with how I feel. Some people here, you can hear like loud gasps at the end. If you listen to the audio, you can hear the crowd kind of go, <gasps> like, you know, like something bad happened. I don't know. But again, I don't think the story matters either way i think it's just we enjoyed that last moment with him and it's just it's bittersweet because we love seeing him at his best but he's just going to be stuck in that cycle forever all right so i think it's about that time for our final score i'm going to give the wrestler an a plus come on guys let's all go take a shower together the wrestler is a masterpiece uh, not even just saying that as a wrestling fan, from a point of a film critic, as someone who you know reviews film closely and accurately, uh, everything down from the performance is escape is escapist at its best. Uh, the cinematography, the just the overall story, the the in depth way it's telling this, this story of a character. Uh, there's no surprise it was nominated for you know best actor and best picture. I, I'm not surprised. I I think it was robbed. For not winning, I think this really is just a masterpiece. Uh, John, where do you stand with this movie? I give this movie an A. Hold on. All right, hold on. There we go. All right, here. There, there it is. Ram jam. You finished. Okay, one more. I gotta go. Huh? I, I gotta leave. I just gave you an ass whipping. Don't you want to get even? No, that's okay. Huh? All right, I'll, I'll catch you later. All right. Later. Just based on everything that we talked about and how good it was, and just the overall enjoyment of watching this movie even mm-hmm. watching it again right it still has the same thing as they held before mm-hmm. even not being into wrestling as much as i once was mm-hmm. it's still it almost makes you want to go back and relive more of the, like the wrestling days too right right i feel like yeah i could i could see this being a uh, catalyst for some people to watch wrestling or just get involved with wrestling in the first place uh just you know to see what it's about it's a uh, it's an interesting animal, professional wrestling. There's, there's no arguing that. Uh, I think, it's, it's for, it's for, it's for everybody, and it's for no one at the same time. If that makes any sense, it's just a, it's a strange profession, and this movie really sheds the light better than anything I could think of in, you know, modern times, even past times that come close to it. Uh, but anyway, John, where can the people find us at home? You can find us on YouTube at the re- the Real Movie Guys on YouTube. You can. Like our channel, subscribe, um, hit the notification bell, see what we're doing. You can also go follow us on Twitter at the Real Movie Guy. We're usually tweeting out, retweeting out, putting things that some things that sometimes we find interesting, we put out and retweet. Um, you can also find us on many podcast platforms such as yes for your listening pleasure we are available in podcast form at itunes spotify anchor google podcast overcast breaker radio public and pocket cast be sure to get to listen at any of those fine places if you already are right now hey we greatly appreciate it just search real movie guys we'll pop right up thank you all again for joining us for this episode of the real review my name's kevin this guy over here he's john we are the real movie guys real guys real movies Real thoughts, and thank you again for joining us for the Real Sports Series. Play the game, watch the movies, we'll see you next time. See you!